So I'm um, Emmeline Afiaki Mafaleo, and I was born and raised in New Zealand. I'm of Māori, Tongan, Samoan descent. Um, I've spent a lot of years in Tonga doing voluntary work. My first degree was in social work, and the reason I did I started studying social work was because um, a best friend of mine who was also Tongan died at only the age of 18. I was, um, I think she was 19, had turned 19 and I was 18. She died from becoming sunburnt. So she got um, low pairs, a type of cancer from her skin becoming, but even though she was a Pacific Islander and obviously brown skinned. And I think just as a young person, it was quite traumatic for me. And I think I was always meant to help other people. So I left my optometry degree and started my first undergrad in social work went on from social work to social policy and um, have always used my practice to write policy um, in this area around family violence and Pacific youth strategy and crime prevention. And so I'm not actually qualified in business <laughs> or in um, areas of social entrepreneurship, but what happened was I set up my first social service agency as a not-for-profit company and pretty much learnt on the job when I turned 25 about being responsible for my own community and helping with development for youth. And then some years later was selected um, in New Zealand, one of 15 in a group called the New Zealand Social Entrepreneurial Fellowship. And we were able to learn what that meant to be a social entrepreneur in, a, in three years in a learning community. So I've kind of learn what it means to be a social entrepreneur in that space and then from that I developed the different social enterprises that I'm involved with right now. Yeah, so what happened was um, I developed an organisation called Affirming Women. I was working with teenage prostitutes and young girls that were of youth, had some youth suicidal tendencies and then um, had a number of young males referred and had you know, only female staff at the time. So I started hiring male staff and Affirming Women became Affirming Works and Affirming Works is a, what we call a Pacific Youth Mentoring Agency where I've been able to design mentoring programs both for primary, intermediate and high school aged um, youth of any culture but obviously in South Auckland or in Auck the Auckland City has a large proportion of Pacific youth mm -hmm. and I've used my Pacific values and my Pacific culture to um, design these programs. And um, in the last 11 years we've mentored over 4,000 youth. Um, and so really from the program delivery in the first two years I had absolutely no funding for the program and was able to record um, the positive outcomes. We have 96% of our youth go on to post-secondary um, school, tertiary school jobs. So we were fully funded by government for nine years. And um, it just became not as innovative, <laughs> or I guess not as, um, um, there wasn't a lot of social responsibility or ownership around the transformation of the individuals and active citizenship around the community. It became more of a um, funding-led, compliance, tick box type of work. So I needed to design something that would allow it to be more sustainable, but more importantly, I mean, everybody loves it to be sustainable, <laughs> but I think for me, more importantly, that it's community-owned and community-responsible. So I designed three years ago um, Community Cafe. My husband, by coincidence, is a baker of 14 years. And um, we thought, you know, a cafe might be a cool thing for young people to hang out and work in, etc. I mean, there's nothing new around that kind of innovation these days. And, um, but we decided that we would have Pacific products in our cafe, so then now we're promoting products from our Pacific region and looking after people at home who are making products. So we flew to Tonga with the understanding that Tonga had good coffee and we thought we'd buy some coffee in Tonga and by coincidence, once again, the um, business was for sale. It was in liquidation, the coffee company. <laughs> and my husband and I put a bid in for the business. So then we um, bought into a complete coffee company 
which we've named after the mentoring program. So the mentoring program in South Auckland is called Dupuanga. And Sorry, can you say that again? It's called Dupuanga. So just from the start, the mentoring program's name? Okay, so. the mentoring program's name in New Zealand is called Dupuanga, and Dupu means to grow, to spring up, and Anga in character. So the idea was to teach young Pacific youth that they would, from their heritage or from their culture, from their identity, they would have a sense of belonging and use this as a resilient factor in their developments. So the coffee is actually called the Buanga because it's coffee grown, processed, harvested and produced in Tonga and the employment and the pickers and the farmers etc are um, all in an ethical trade program. So we've been able to take our social service youth agency that we started 11 years and add a social enterprise, which is Community Cafe, mm -hmm. and now the coffee factory and the processing plant and roaster, etc., in Tonga, and then bring those region, bring the region a little bit closer together around becoming more and more responsible for one another. And we've just only this year started another cafe in Tonga. So, you know, chefs and cooks from New Zealand go over to Tonga and do some training with the cafe and the roaster from Tonga comes to New Zealand and we provide these different exchanges and things and and it's, um, for me, it's just really kind of trying to bring the Pacific region to become more closely related to um, both the developing countries of New Zealand and maybe Australia and then have what is more mature in that sense, support what is less mature around the smaller Pacific Islands and then allowing those, those um, smaller islands to become more self-sustainable and supported. Um, I've got two fantastic previous staff, they must have worked for me five years ago, that have actually set up their own organisation here, which is called Bridging Works, <laughs> which is um, something that they've done themselves, but you know, they've come from being involved in mentoring, and I have students that I have mentored that are currently mentoring, so it's really about, um, I guess the word would be paying it forward. You know, I'd love for it to be um, a movement or philosophy that Pacific migrants, children, or you know, first, second generation of Pacific people born in developing country want to still identify with their homeland or their parents' homeland, and it might just be in a in a philosophy or cultural um, connection, or it could be in a way where they're actually giving back in some shape or form. So, in our cafe in New Zealand, we have salmon chili sauce, for example, Fiji and jam salmon honey and of course the Tongan coffee so we try to um, buy products from within that region so that we're giving that hand up yeah so, it's, so it's always, there's always things growing always ways we can do things and lots of people are very interested in the model and the practice and the social service delivery side of things and so I'm quite happy to share that information with people in different areas that want to help their own community. I think it's been great to be open to a more global perspective in this space I think um, I've been someone that's been involved in my local, continued to be involved in my local community, in um, the national space, both in Tonga and New Zealand and regionally. I'm a member of the Chamber of Commerce in Tonga. And so I've been really fortunate to um, be exposed to those fields. But then when I meet with people like um, Dr. Sanju Chitri and Bunker Roy, and they have they have this you know mass numbers of population in their in their nations and the, you know they're parts of these large continents and I'm from this little South Pacific island. Sometimes it's quite um, refreshing in the sense around um, what types of work they're doing and what innovations they're needing to engage to help their people. And I've just really enjoyed. This is my first time in Melbourne. So I've just really enjoyed a new city, new faces, new people, new ideas, and you know, just the zealousness. Yeah, it's been awesome.